Hello everyone, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, in this episode of Snoozat, Questions with Solution, we're going to be looking at some questions asked in the sample paper for Snoozat of English. So we're going to be looking at some questions of English which were asked in this paper. So there are very few questions that come from English and most of them are based on an extract. So let's look at some questions here. Well, we have five questions based on this particular passage. So we have to read the passage and answer the questions that follow. Let's start reading the passage. Sunit Varma begins his day early. There are meetings lined up for the day with his 10-member core group. That includes a four-member design team, the business development manager, and the chief financial officer. The evening is to be spent with his sponsor, champagne maker Moet Hennessy, discussing the expansion of his business venture to Dubai and Hong Kong. At 30, Varma is the CEO of Sunit Varma Design Private Limited and also one of India's leading fashion designers, but not the only one to have Private Limited suffixed to his name. Fast realizing that business is not just about selling stuff at weddings and fashion shows, designers are corporatizing Hortacorto. Among the first is Ritu Kumar, with her 25-year-old son, Amrish, giving the necessary push to move her designer retail chain, Ritu's, into top gear last year. Amrish, who is the director of marketing of his mother's enterprise, Ritika Designs Private Limited got Mumbai-based accredited, I mean Mumbai-based Universal Consulting to evaluate the scope of the company and revamp its retailing system. Now, Ritu can sit anywhere in the world and keep a tab on the stages of production and sale of garments. Says Amrish, quantifying this change is difficult, but our production of sales and finished goods to sales ratio are improving every month. Designers are turning over a new leaf, hiring professionals to des for design, business development, marketing, and advertising to keep time and cost overruns in check. The payoff is starting to show. Krishnamata's business had grown almost by 60%. She discusses, she discusses sales reports, budgets, and marketing strategies with her 35-member team regularly. Her team feeds the schedule and details on each collection onto a PC, earlier maintained in Meta's head and a notebook. And she doesn't juggle all the decisions, instead alternates between her labels K2 and OOB and spends the rest of the time on her couture business and meeting clients. I find it refreshing to be only responsible for my creations, not to think of which magazine to advertise in or what schemes to run in my stores. It's all taken care of. Well, let's look at our first question. One of the recent trends in the Indian fashion industry is the emergence of a new and bold designers ready to experiment, be the corporatization of the fashion industry, see Hortecorte becoming affordable to the layman, the children of the fashion designers taking over the business. So, let's look at our passage. Well, we can see that in the second page, the first sentence says, fast realizing that business is not just about selling stuff at weddings and fashion shows, designers are corporatizing Hotakoto. Well, that means option B, the corporatization of the fashion industry is the correct answer. Because all throughout this passage, we've learned how companies and fashion designers are hiring more talent in the business sector and the marketing sector in order to sell their products. So option B is the correct option. The name of Ritu Kumar's enterprise is is it Ritika Designs, Ritu Designs, Ritu Kumars, or Ritus? Well, let's look at the second page again. 
Among the first is Ritu Kumar with her 25-year-old son Amrish giving the necessary push to move her designer retail chain Ritu's into top gear last year. Now this might look like the correct answer, but if you look if you read further, Amrish, who is the director of marketing of his mother's enterprise, Ritika Designs Private Limited, looks like it looks like this, Ritika Designs Private Limited, is the right answer. And that's correct. Ritu's is the fashion label, and Ritika Designs is the enterprise that manages it. And we're asked to find out the enterprise. Number three. Why has Krishnamata's business grown by 60%? Well, there are four options here. Now let's look at the term 60% in the passage. C. You can see here that Krishnamata's business has grown almost by 60%. Now let's look at the sentences above it. Designers are turning over a new leaf, hiring professionals for design, business development, marketing, and advertising to keep time and cost overruns in check. The payoff is starting to show. So therefore, hiring professionals for design, business development, marketing, and advertising seems to be the answer why Krishnamata's business has grown almost by 60%. So therefore, among the following options, it is clear that option C, professionals have been hired to deal with various aspects of running the business, is correct. So, spends a lot of time on her co-chair business and meeting clients. That's an after effect of hiring people. Big team of 35 relies on IT and computers. That's another after effect. Discusses sales reports with her team. That is also the job that she does in addition to designing Couture. Next, K2 and UB are labels designed by Sunit Verma, Krishna Mehta, Ritu Kumar, or Moat Hennessy. Well, Moat Hennessy is an advertiser, so that's incorrect. Sunit Verma just has Sunit Verma Private Limited, so therefore option A is incorrect. Ritu Kumar has the label Ritu's and her enterprise is Ritika, Ritika Designs Private Limited, so option C is incorrect. If you look at our, you know, passage, you can see that, and she doesn't juggle all her decision, decisions. Instead, alternates between her labels, K2 and UB. So that means Krishna Mehta is the owner of the labels K2 and UB. So therefore, option B is the correct option. Now, the last question. Sunit Varma is planning to expand his presence to Dubai and Hong Kong because A, he's a very popular designer in those parts of the world. That's incorrect because he's a popular designer in India. He wants to expand his business. He has the backing of good, good sponsors. Well, that may be correct, but he only has one sponsor. That's Mo Hennessy. Universal consults, consultants advised him to do so. These guys work for the label Ritu's, owned by Ritu Kumar and managed by Amrish. So therefore, option D is incorrect. The right answer is option C. He has hired professionals to help him expand his business and corporatize it. And if you look at our passage, so you can see that there are meetings lined up for the day with this 10-member core group. And then the evening is to be sent, spent with a sponsor discussing the expansion of the business. In order for him to think about the expansion of his business, he must have had input from his business development manager as well as the chief financial officer. So therefore, option C is the correct option. We have one more passage for this video and this one is, you know, this one contains the answer to three questions. We have to read the passage and answer the questions that follow. While you might hear, say, Nirvana covering a Lead Belly song, or John Cougar, Mellencamp, and Bruce Springsteen paying lip service to Woody Guthrie, and all manner of bands showing up with acoustic instruments on MTV's Unplugged show, the influence of traditional folk on today's rock is pretty small. The anti-folk scene of the late 1980s 
an attempt by New York musicians to provide an acoustic-based air of sorts to the Hootenannies of the 50s and 60s had minimal impact. The Washington Squares attempting to mimic the beatnik folk of Peter, Paul, and Mary was a failure on all counts. Many fine performers of the last couple of decades have been labeled as folk because their arrangements are largely acoustic, but really belong more in the singer-songwriter camp than traditional music. Their category is more often a function of the audiences they play for, or the fact that acoustic guitars are at the forefront of their arrangements. Hence, you might find Kate Wolfe, Lucinda Williams, Tish Hinojosa, Mary McCaslin, Peter Stamfell, the McCarrigal sisters, Towns Van Zant and Bill Morrissey in folk sections, although they sing original, at times compelling material about the here and now, and are often not aware to using some electric instruments. Indeed, the music of these above performers is not terribly dissimilar from some artists commonly marketed as rock and pop musicians, such as Johnny Mitchell. Some performers who are in many respects troubadours in the folk tradition, like Michel Schacht or Frank, are marketed as rock because that's where their audience is perceived to be. The 11th Dream Day offshoot, Freakwater, was marketed to alternative or indie rock listeners more because of their pedigree than the music, which harkens in spirit back to the Carter family. So this is a paragraph that talks about alternative music and people trying to market themselves as folk musicians when they're not. So the sixth question, Michelle Shocked is marketed as. Well, let's look at the extract above. You see some, perform some performers who are in many respects troubadours in the folk tradition, like Michelle Shocked or Frank, are marketed as rock. So therefore, option A, rock music, is the correct answer. Next question. The influence of traditional folk on today's rock is huge, pretty small, insignificant, and absolute zero. Now, this question is a question based on the extract, so we need to find out the, this particular sentence or a sentence close to it in the extract. Let's look at the first part. You can see that in italics the influence of traditional rock on today's traditional folk on today's rock is pretty small. So therefore the correct answer is option B pretty small. Huge insignif and insignificant are total opposites to pretty small and an absolute zero means there's nothing whereas there is some influence so therefore option D is incorrect. I mean yeah option D is incorrect. The correct answer for the following question is, for this question is option B, the influence of traditional folk on today's rock is pretty small. The last question, the anti-folk scene of the late 1980s, A had minimal impact, B, C, sorry, this is B, proved to be a landmark for change, and C was, had a major impact that had to do with the order of the options here, and option D, none of the options given. So which of these is correct? Let's look back to the passage. You can see that after the influence of traditional rock, you have the next sentence dealing with the anti-folk scene. The anti-folk scene of the late 1980s, an attempt by New York musicians to provide an acoustic-based air, air of sorts to the Hootenannies of the 60s and 50s and 60s, had minimal impact. So the text between the brackets is part of a sent part of the sentence and that's you know um not important the important part of the sentence is the anti folk scene of the late 1980s had minimal impact so you can use had minimal impact just after the late 1980s so that means option A had minimal impact is the correct option that concludes this episode of Snoozat. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. 
which is Brain Blitz Audios. If you want to access more of our videos on SnooSat, don't forget to hit the playlist link, which is given in the description box down below. To get our latest updates, don't forget to hit the bell icon that is again present below the video. So, until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, bye-bye for now.